The world of movies is populated by a whole lot of ridiculous teachers. It's practically a genre of its own, from the bluntly titled Bad Teacher starring Cameron Diaz to Election with Matthew Broderick, as well as a whole host of others. There are some things. You mean you eat other people's lunches? Stop it! He's never been trained to handle. You fill in the papers I've just given you with three little words. God is dead. Were you rushing or were you dragging? I, I don't know. If you deliberately sabotage my band, I will gut you like a pig. Oh my dear God. Are you one of those single tier people? This isn't just a modern thing, either. You can find the trope of the horribly ineffective teacher all the way back in the French New Wave with the 400 blows. All of these teachers are extremes. Either extremely authoritarian and hungry for control, or extremely unprofessional, lazy, promiscuous, out of control. On the other end of the spectrum, though, there's also a genre of super teacher movies that are inspiring cultural touchstones for many who go on to enter the profession, like Dead Poet Society, Freedom Rider, Stand and Deliver, and others. For 30 years, Glenn Holland found a way to make a difference. A lucky one would get out on a football scholarship. How about I believe in the unlucky ones? These teachers are equally extreme as the ones previously mentioned, but instead of being extremely in or out of control, these characters are extremely inspiring, charismatic, and humanistic. Both of these extremes are, obviously, unrealistic to a staggering degree. As a new teacher myself, I've observed a lot of really good ones and a lot of really bad ones, but none who destroy lives like Matthew Broderick or spew gold with every syllable like Robin Williams. Most are just kind-hearted folks who are both really intelligent and ill-prepared, as anyone would be, to deal with the constant chaotic stream of illogically petty frustrations that come along with working with kids, not to mention the hyper-political and bureaucratic hellscape that is the standardized testing system. So, for the most part, movies about super teachers are ironically non-instructive because they provide role models who are too unrealistic to actually learn anything about education or learning itself from. One major exception to this rule in my mind is Richard Linklater's The School of Rock, which markets itself pretty squarely as a bad teacher movie. Hello, this is Ned Schneebly. Everyone, I'd like to introduce Miss Dunham's substitute. This is Mr. Schneebly. All right, look, I've got a hangover. Who knows what that means? Doesn't that mean you're drunk? No. It means I was drunk yesterday. Although there are some elements of this in the film, Jack Black's performance as a rock and roll teacher impersonator is surprisingly illustrative of the best qualities a teacher could have. A lot of this has to do with Jack Black's acting. Though he's often dismissed as a bit of an over-the-top goofball, Jack Black undoubtedly has the very valuable skill of knowing how to use his presence to command a room and hold the crowd's attention. Not many people talk or think about this as a skill in regards to teaching, but a pretty large portion of the job involves acting. Getting animated, getting serious, and bringing humor when the situation calls for it. This is not to mention being able to think on your feet and improv at a moment's notice when your technology breaks or a student says something you'd never expect. You're a fat loser and you have body odor. Or a guest walks into your classroom unannounced. E equals MC squared. Oh. Miss Mullins, come in. The main reason why acting and improv are important teaching skills is to increase student engagement. Nobody under the age of 50 has any intrinsic motivation to want to learn from this guy. In 1930, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives, in an effort to alleviate the effects of the, anyone, anyone, the Great Depression, passed the, anyone, anyone, a tariff bill, but Jack Black's passionate and unpredictable teaching persona draws you in. A lot of this has to do with how much control Jack Black has over his face and his ability to emphasize or add nuance to what he's saying non-verbally. Hello, Harvard, yo. Acting purists might say he's trying a little too hard. But if that's you, I implore you to imagine yourself as a middle school student. Would you feel the same way? Who else wants to go for the gold? I do. I do. All right. Black isn't just faking his way to student engagement, though. He actually cares about what he's teaching, and that shows. Sure, he may not be adhering to the school's preordained curriculum exactly. What about math? No, not important. World cultures? Not important. You guys, we need to focus here. But teaching what you love goes a long way, and students are intuitive enough to know when you're just phoning it in. 
I thought about Linklater's film a lot as I was studying for my teaching degree, and the thing I kept coming back to was the monumental importance of teaching something you actually have the capability of getting excited about. That enthusiasm is contagious in the classroom. And to be honest, teaching is a pretty soul-crushing job if you don't have it. I wasn't always like this, you know. I wasn't always wound this tight. There was a time when I was fun. And the film stands as a testament for why this kind of enthusiasm in the classroom is important. The decision on the part of Linklater and Jack Black to depict this character as a guy who has a serious fire inside him for his curriculum actually makes the whole rock music conceit perfectly appropriate. Rock is a hugely diverse category of musical subgenres, but the one thing that they all have in common is a kind of fiery spirit and raw energy. Rock is about the passion, man. Where's the joy? The passionate ethos of rock music is the same spirit and energy that Jack Black brings to the role. The same spirit and energy that the best teachers need to bring into their classrooms for students to see the subject as worth caring about. Another genius choice that the film makes as far as teaching practice is concerned is the way Jack Black presents his material as an empowering force against the manipulations and corruption of the world. The idea that he is expected to bribe students with high grades and gold stars while threatening them with failure and demerits is disgusting to Black. We get gold stars when we master the material covered in class. How do we get gold stars if we just have recess? What are these black dots here? Demerits. What kind of a sick school is this? Punishment and reward are invaluable in the current education system, but usually this type of hoop jumping just teaches students the skill of conformity and compliance rather than anything actually meaningful or inspiring they'll take with them after they've gotten their class credit. Baby, we were making straight A's. Yeah, yeah. But we were stuck in the dumb days. Mm -hmm. Don't take much to memorize your lies. And if you, you want to be the teacher in the Rather than using these cheap but ubiquitous psychological coercions to keep the gears of the education system turning, Jack Black gets his students pissed at the system itself. If you want to rock, you got to break the rules. You got to get mad at the man. And right now I'm the man. That's right, I'm the man. And who's got the guts to tell me off, huh? And if there's one thing that may be true of all adolescents, it is the belief that authority sucks. Jack Black personifies the concept of authority, like many have done before him, as the man, and gives one of my favorite film speeches of all time to explain it. Oh, you don't know the man? Oh, well, he's everywhere. In the White House, down the hall, Miss Mullins. She's the man. And the man ruined the ozone, and he's burning down the Amazon, and he kidnapped Shamu and put her in a chlorine tank, okay? Nowhere is the average adolescent's disdain for the man more apparent than in the school system, especially one that enforces dress codes as strict as the one seen in the School of Rock. Well, it's not school uniform. Miss Mullins, you're the man. Thank you, Frankie. Validating a student's perspective on something like this is a powerful educational tool, but only if a teacher can, in honesty, present their content as giving students real, practical power to gain personal freedom against whatever unjust masters they might be serving. The way Black presents this concept is, admittedly, cartoony and juvenile. It's consistent with his slightly oblivious character, after all. But the idea that the primary function of learning is to fight back against the man has some serious, far-reaching, and inspirational implications. For example, take a look at some of the Middle East's educational activists. Malala Yousafzai advocates for education above all else to end terrorist control of Pakistan. One child, one teacher, one book, and one pen, they can change the world. Marzan Satrapi even wrote a very punk rock memoir called Persepolis that is largely about the importance of self-education under 1970s Iranian theocracy. Effectively communicating to students that their education gives them power to take control of their own lives is infinitely more motivating than the bribery and threat of grades, which incentivizes learning only as a means to a very specifically arbitrary end. Jack Black brings his stick it to the man rock and roll ethos to his interactions with individual students as well, which may be the most practical argument for what makes him a truly great teacher. 
We live in a one-size-fits-all age of near-universal standardization in the education system, where the powers that be have decided that the best way to leave no child behind is to make sure that all students in a classroom, or in some cases a building, county, or state, are taught the exact same skills, using the exact same materials, assessed using the exact same method, which usually involves bubble sheets, and graded according to the exact same rubric across the board. If Jack Black were to teach a standardized School of Rock class, he would require all of his students to learn to play the guitar as good as Zach can in order to demonstrate mastery of the material and earn a passing grade. Coming from a musical background, Jack Black knows this would be counterproductive to actual growth, so instead he treats his classroom like a band, in which all members bring their individual strengths to the table in order to collaborate, creating both classroom community and opportunity for each student to shine. He gives them all different instruments, different roles, sometimes non-musical but still essential ones, and different homework. The educational buzzword for this is differentiated instruction, and Jack Black's character is the master at it. He never coddles his students, but he also doesn't discourage them. He sees the areas in which students already have strength, sees areas in which they need to improve, and cultivates their potential in a way that always comes off as positive and encouraging, even in disapproval. You're looking a little robotronic. Okay, let's uh, grease up the hinges and listen. Loosey goosey, baby. Loosey goosey. Of course, all of these classroom strategies would be impossible without forming relationships with students and interfacing with them on a personal level to establish trust, which he does in some pretty genuine and heartfelt ways in this movie. Well, what are you afraid of? They're going to laugh at me. Why? Why would they laugh at you? I don't know. Because I'm fat. Tamika. Hey, you've got something everybody wants. You've got talent, girl. You have an incredible singing voice, and I'm not just saying that. You heard of Aretha Franklin, right? Okay, she's a big lady, but when she starts singing, she blows people's minds. Everybody wants to party with Aretha! And, um, you know who else has a weight issue? Who? Oh. Me. In interactions like this one, he always manages to affirm a student's personal pride while keeping them motivated to continue pushing themselves, which is a tricky balancing act to pull off. Finally, perhaps the most surprising message that this movie sends about education is found at the end, when the students end up losing the battle of the bands, even after all of their hard work and obvious passion. In this final act, the School of Rock communicates a rarely stated truism about education. It's not about success. For all the rhetoric about college and career readiness, the platonic ideal of the education system is not to help people make money, but rather to cultivate talent, form community, and grow as individuals. At the end of the day, though, Jack Black's character was using his students for monetary gain with his Battle of the Bands bid. What about the project? Wake up, Marco. There was no project. He just wanted us to play a show so we can make some money. And the major turning point for his character is to realize that helping his students develop as individuals is the end, not the means. So, from this teacher's perspective, The School of Rock is a rare mainstream movie about education that seems to posture itself as a bad teacher movie and even makes some humorous nods to the cliches. I have been touched by your kids. And I'm pretty sure I've touched them. What? Oh my God. But it ends up being one of the most lively and human super teacher movies out there. Like most examples in that genre, the character at the center of the film might be a little too unrealistic to offer practical solutions to teachers, but in this case it's mostly just because of his willingness to disregard the expectations of established curriculum and standardization in order to teach something that actually matters both to him and his students. Doing the same in the real world will get you fired as soon as Jack Black does here. Who's to blame? The man? Yes, but you can't just say it, man. You gotta feel it in your blood and guts! It's no wonder that the last scene in the film shows him opening his own after-school program outside of the education system at large. In this movie, Jack Black demonstrates to us how great teaching and life-changing learning is possible, but it's a whole lot harder than it needs to be when you have to play by the man's rules.